Well, good morning. That was okay. I'm going to try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. That was so much better. I just wanted to just uh, real quickly just welcome you to worship. Uh, I'm Ryan. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, in a few minutes, you'll hear from Pastor Pat as he shares the message. Uh, but just as a, a, a way to kind of welcome you and to, to prepare our time here together. Um, one, if you're joining for this first time, please uh, you know feel free to let us know who you are by filling out the connection card that's in the seat backs in front of you. Uh, online, there's a QR code that you can select, and it'll take you to our electronic uh, card there. Um, but one of the things we really try to, to to do here when we worship is we want to just invite you to be a part of that. And uh, one of the things we say often here is, is it's, a, it's, not a partic- it's a participative uh, event. It's not a spectator sport. So in uh, just a couple moments here, we're going we're gonna to sing together, and we're, we're hoping that you can join along with that and our voices coming together. Uh, it really can and should be kind of an act of, of worship and prayer when our voices are reaching the heavens. And it's so wonderful to hear your voices um, you know, from, from this uh, point of view as well and to see people participating in that time. So in hopes to, to do that, that, um, I just want to kind of help allow you and ask you to join me as we pray to prepare ourselves for this time of worship um, as we, we sing and as we go through his word and in times of prayer throughout the service. So if you don't mind just bowing your heads with me as we prepare our time together. Father in heaven, Lord, this is your time. Uh, we're here together, Father, because we, we want to worship you, because we want to lift your name on high. We want to exalt you. Um, and, and this is just that time that we're, we want to commit to you now. So I ask God that each and every person that's here in person who is watching online, that you just prepare our hearts right now to receive what you have for us during this worship time together, uh, that our hearts are, are prepared to receive you, that, that we, God, are, are, are removed any distractions that might take our focus off of you during this time. Pray, God, that you just uh, allow us to, to, to hear the, the music, to hear the, the lyrics, to, to hear the word, and that you speak directly into our hearts this morning. So we ask that, God, and we commit this time to you. In your great son's name, Jesus, amen. Would you go ahead and stand with us?
Kids, you guys can come on up while I'm getting all these wires unhooked. Good morning. How are we all doing this morning? Good? Okay, I'm going to ask you to do something. Go ahead and close your eyes, and I want you to listen and see what you hear. What do you guys hear? Not a whole lot, right? A buzzing? Okay. All right, now keep your eyes closed. What do you hear now? A bell. Yeah, you can go ahead and open your eyes. And this morning we're going to be talking about uh, joy as we light our Advent, cal- or, uh, Advent candles. And I think a, a bell is a really good picture of what joy is like. Because where does the noise come from on this bell? What creates the noise, Jonathan? Yeah, a little ball in the middle, right? It's, in, it's inside the bell. And the only way that, that that makes noise and creates joy, which a bell is a sound of joy, is that you have to move it, right? It has to be shaken. It has to be moving around. I think this is a real good picture of joy. Sometimes we think that joy is the same as happiness, but it's not joy comes from the inside, like that little ball here, and not from the outside. And so we can be joyful even when things aren't going really well for us, but we can only do that if what's on the inside is Jesus, right? And so today as we light the, the, the uh, third candle that we're going to light, it's the candle of joy, and it reminds us of the joy that we can have from having Jesus inside of us. So Genesis, if you could go get your family and bring them back up here, you guys get to light the pink candle today. Can you do that? Okay, they're coming up. It's interesting that the candle is pink for joy. You notice the other ones have been purple. Here they come over here, Genesis. (laughs) The other candles are purple, but the pink one is because that's the liturgical color for, for joy. So... Give dad the lighter there, and if you guys want to go ahead and you can help your dad do it. There you go. Awesome. You got a good job. Let's pray and thank Jesus for the joy he brings. Father, we thank you so much for the joy that comes from having Jesus in our lives. Pray this candle would be a reminder of that, and we ask it in his name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Okay, before we get, begin the message this morning, I want you to, if you have your phone with you, you can go ahead and take it out, especially if you have um, the, the new app, church app on there. Hopefully you've heard about it. If not, we'll make sure you do. Um, I do ask that you please silence your phones if you haven't already done that. That would be helpful. But if you go to the app, if you have it on there, if not, hopefully you'll get it soon, and you go to the, uh, the main page there. Looks like this, something like this. And you go down about halfway down, it says, see where it says sermon notes? This is, I think, one of the coolest features on this app. So if you click on sermon notes, and then you'll notice the next page, it says up at the top, 12, 11, 20, 22, the angel song. If you click on that, you will get the same thing that's inside your bulletin, only in a digital form. 
And I know what some of you guys like to do. I know that some of you play this game where before the sermon you try to guess what words are going to go in the blank, right? How many of you guys do that, right? Okay. So this app is going to actually help you do that because if you go and you click on one of those blanks and you type in something, if you type in the wrong word, it will say, do you want me to fill this in for you? And it will actually give you the right word in there. So you can't even get it wrong even if you try with that. So I just want to let you know that that's there, and that's, that's part of a lot of the things that we have in our new church app. If you haven't already downloaded it, had a chance to do that, we encourage you to do that. This is going to become our main um, way of communicating with our church, keeping you up to date with what's going on. There's a lot of features in there. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, hopefully you'll take advantage. So if you want to do, use the sermon notes today, you can go ahead and do that. Well, we've been looking at the, the Christmas story, and, and already in the things that we've been looking at, we've seen that, that angels play a really big part in the Christmas story, right? We saw where the angel came to Zechariah and says to Zechariah, you and Elizabeth, I know you're old, but, but you're going to have a baby even in your old age. And sure enough, it, it comes true. The angel Gabriel comes and, t- and gives him that message. That same angel Gabriel, he comes to Mary about six months later. It says to Mary, Mary, you're going to become the mother of the Savior of the world. A little later than that, probably, another angel, possibly still Gabriel, but another angel comes to Joseph and says to Joseph, hey, look, I know that this baby that Mary is carrying, it's not your baby, but I want you to marry her anyway. And so we've seen that that angels are already a big part of the Christmas story, and we're going to see that again this morning as we look at the song of the angels. And that really shouldn't be a surprise if you think about it, because in the Scriptures we find over 300 references to angels. And roughly about half the books of the Bible contain something about angels. But here's the problem. Most of us don't get our ideas about angels from the Scriptures. We tend to get our ideas from things like like TV shows or movies, perhaps like this one.
So uh, Clarence Oddbody, Angel's second class, is portrayed in this movie as someone who is a human being who died and became an angel. And most of you are familiar with the movie. A little later in the, in the movie, the little girl, when the bell rings, remember what does she say? Teacher told me that whenever a bell rings, what happens? An angel gets his wings. And so here in the in TV and movies, we have angels portrayed as all kinds of things that are completely contrary to what the scriptures teach. And so this morning, as we continue in our in our series, the first songs of, of Christmas, we are going to look at the the song that the angels sing. But in order for us to really understand that song and apply it to our lives, there's some things that we need to understand about angels and who they are. But we need to get that understanding from the scriptures and not from TV shows and movies, right? And so there are three main roles that we find for angels in the scriptures. The first role is that they magnify God. That's one of the the primary purposes. And and we're going to see that in this song that the angels are absolutely going to do that. That's their role. And and every time we're given a, a glimpse into the throne room of God. What do we see? We see angels around the throne giving praise to God. We see it in places like Isaiah chapter 6 or Revelation chapter 4. And the angels are there giving glory to God and magnifying God. And we're going to see here in this song that that's what the angels are doing. They're, they're magnifying God. We even see it when, when Job comes face to face with God and, and, and God speaks to Job. And he says these words to Job. He says, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? And then here's the key part. When the morning stars, that's a a phrase that God used to describe the angels. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And what God is saying is back before I created man, I created angels. They they were a, a separate class of beings. They're not the same as humans. No human ever becomes an angel. No angel ever becomes a human. And he says these These angelic beings, they were around before I even created this earth, before I created mankind, and they were there. Their purpose was to magnify God. So we see, first of all, that what angels do is they magnify God. The second thing is that they're messengers for God. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, the the Hebrew and the Greek word that is translated angels, in both cases, those words literally mean messengers. In other places in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that same word is actually translated messenger. So that's, that's their purpose. They're to be messengers for God. And in some cases, like we're going to sing with the song this morning, they come and they bring great news, like the birth of the Savior. But to be real honest, most of the places in the Scripture, when the angels come and they bring a message, it's a message of warning. Sometimes it's a message of judgment to come. I mean, just read the book of Revelation, right? Look at the the messages that the angels bring theirs. So almost every time that we see an angel appear in the Scriptures, guess what the the reaction of the people that see him is? It's fear because they're bringing a message from God. And we're going to see that this morning with the shepherds, the same thing. So they magnify God. They're messengers of God. And then the third thing they do is that they minister to people. They minister to people. The book of Hebrews gives us some insight, and and we'll get to this next year when we get to Hebrews chapter 13, but but here's a couple of verses that give us some insight into how angels minister to people. Here's the first one. It says, Are they not, speaking of angels, ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? So we see right away that the purpose of these angels, they're sent to serve. Now, most of the time, we never see angels. They're they're operating in an unseen realm. But sometimes, for a specific purpose, God allows them to take on a physical form for a period of time to come down here to earth and to minister to people. Usually, they take on a, a form of a man, like we've already seen in the Christmas story with the angel Gabriel. 
with the angel that comes and, and appears to Joseph. There's another verse a little later on in Hebrews that gives us some more insight. It says this, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't totally understand what this verse means, but, but what I do understand is that sometimes these angels come to earth and, and they take on a physical form to serve God and to minister to people. And so that's... That's what we want to make sure that we understand about angels. And we're going to see in this song that we'll look at in just a moment that that angel song is going to do all three of those things. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Luke chapter 2. We're going to, I'm going to give you some background before we actually get to the song. And uh, I'm going to begin reading this morning in verse 8. So Luke chapter 2, verse 8. If you don't have a Bible or some in the in the uh, seat backs in front of you, you can look at the verses on the screen as well. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and relying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, and we'll come back to that in just a moment. So here's what we see. The shepherds are out in their field. They're just minding their own business. They're tending their sheep. This is how one of the reasons we know Christmas probably wasn't really on December 25th because they wouldn't have been out on the fields and probably sometime in the fall. We don't know for sure. But they're out there tending their sheep. And first of all, what happens? One angel appears. And what's their response? They're afraid, right? We said that that's usually what happens when angels appear. I love how the King James Version puts it. And they were sore afraid. I mean, they were, they were scared. And you, you can understand why, right? An angel appears to you, you're out tending your sheep. And the angel comes and says, hey, don't be afraid. I'm bringing you a message. I'm bringing you good news, a message of great joy. And he tells them about Jesus and, and the fact that he's born and he's in Bethlehem. And, and he gives them some clues on how to find the baby. I've always kind of wondered about that myself. I mean, I wonder how many babies were born in Bethlehem that night. And all they get is, well, you'll find them wrapped in some cloths and lying in a manger. I mean, that's not much to go on. But they eventually do find Jesus. We'll talk about that in a moment. So he gives them that message, and then it says, all of a sudden, a whole angel army appears. That's what a heavenly host is. It's an angel army. <coughs> and this angel army sings the song that we're going to look at in a moment. So you think they were scared when there was one angel? Can you imagine what it was like when all of a sudden there's a whole angel army singing this song? And so here's, here's the song that they sang. I want you to go ahead. Will you just read this out loud with me? It's a, it's a short song. Actually, in, in the underlying Greek, it's 11 words. But it's a great song. So will you read it out loud with me? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Short little song, but there is so much here. And by now, you've probably already figured out what the, the main idea of the message is going to be today, and that's this, that the angel's song is a call to undeserved peace. This song is all about peace, but it's a peace that we don't deserve, and it's a peace that not everyone receives, even though it's available to everyone. And we see that peace manifest in two aspects of who God is here. Two important aspects of his character and who God is. We see it in God's glory, and we see it in God's grace. God's glory and God's grace. So let's take a couple of minutes just to talk about each one of those. Let's talk first about God's glory. It says here that the angels, that they were, they were giving God glory, and we saw that that was one of their functions. Why? It was to magnify God. So we shouldn't be surprised that they were doing that. And they had every reason to do it. Think about this. These angels, 
They had witnessed Jesus face to face in heaven where he was receiving worship and honor and glory that he deserved before he put on a body of flesh and came down here to earth. They knew who Jesus was. They knew that he was 100% God. They knew that he was worthy of every ounce of worship that anyone could give. And they also understood a couple other things. They understood that, that man had been separated by God because of their sin that there was a war going on between man and God because of, of man's sin. But the third thing that they knew, and the reason they could give God so much glory, is they knew that from the Old Testament there were all kinds of prophecies that pointed ahead to the time when Jesus would come to this earth and be born as a little baby, and even more importantly, that he would grow up and live a sinless life and die on a cross so that that war that we have with God could be ended and we could have peace. And so, yeah, they gave God glory for that because they're seeing it unfold right before their eyes now. And it says that they gave God glory in the highest. That's a really interesting word. It's just one word, again, in the Greek. And it can have two meanings. It can mean the highest in rank or it can mean the highest in location. And in this case, I think it actually means both of them. It means it's the highest in rank. It's the, the greatest glory that they could give to anyone. But it's also, <coughs> excuse me, the highest in location because it's glory in the highest heavens. And that is really important for us because here's what it shows. It shows that salvation, it shows that this peace that we can have with God, it's not something that we work out here on earth and send up to God. It's something that God has already worked out in the heavens and that he sends down to us. It's not something that we earn. It's not something that we deserve. It's something that God does because he loves us. And we'll talk, excuse me, talk more about that in just a moment. So first thing we see here is we see God's glory in the angel's song. It's, it's magnifying God, the, the very thing that we, we know that we expected them to do. But then there's also God's grace that's manifest in this song too. It's God's grace. We see that this, this peace, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, it's not something that we, that we earn or deserve. It's something that God makes available to all of us because he loves us so much. And we, he talks here about peace on earth. And I'm not sure that, that our understanding of what that peace on earth is, that we always understand that as fully as we should. I mean, in English, we use the word peace to talk about just the absence of conflict, right? And in Greek, the, the word that was originally used in that way, it just meant that there was an absence of conflict. When the war was over, there was peace. That's how we tend to think of it. But we need to remember that the writers of the Scriptures, almost all of them, they were, they were Jews. And their understanding of peace would have gone back more to the Hebrew idea of what peace is, to this idea of shalom. And shalom is much more than just the absence of conflict. It's more, of, it's more about right relationships, right relationships with God that make it possible for us to have right relationships with the people around us. We've often described it as being a, a sense of wholeness or, or well-being in our lives. It's much more than just not having conflict with someone else. But you'll notice here that, that he says that that peace doesn't come to everyone. He says it comes among those with whom he is pleased. With whom he is pleased. This is a really important part of this, and, and most of you like me, you're probably familiar with the King James translation of this verse, right? Which reads this way, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, and here's goodwill toward men. I mean, how many, you see it all over the place, right? People put it up on Christmas decorations, you see it in Christmas cards, this idea of goodwill towards men. But the problem with that translation is it, it kind of implies that, that this peace is, is everyone gets it. And that's why I'm really glad the way that the, the, the translators of the ESV and some of the newer translations have translated it, with whom he is pleased. 
But whether it's with whom he is pleased or goodwill towards men, it's, it's just translating one single Greek word. And it's very clear, if you look at the context here, that he's not saying that, pe- that everyone gets peace. Mankind in general do- don't get peace. Only those with whom God is pleased. So what does that mean? What does it mean, those with whom God is pleased? What, is, what does that look like? Let me see if I can't illustrate it. In my marriage, I am pleased with my wife. I love her. If someone tries to attack her, her or malign her or do her harm, I'm going to come to her defense every single time, right? Because I love her. And I'm going to do that regardless of how I might feel about her at that time. Maybe we've had a disagreement or she's done something that upsets me, but I guarantee you that, that even during those times, if someone tries to do something that's going to harm my wife, guess what I'm doing? I'm, I'm going to be right in there, and I'm going to do everything I can to protect her because I am pleased with her. And I do that not because she deserves it, but because I love her. And the same thing is, is true even more so, really, with God. God loves us like that, too. He wants to shower his favor down upon us, not not because he feels good about us, not because we always please him. Even when we displease him, even when we disobey him, he wants to shower us with his grace. That's his default mode. That's, That's how much God loves us. But the thing is, not everyone gets that. That that peace is available to everyone, but it's sure undeserved peace, right? And not everyone gets it. That's why we said this morning that this angel song, that it's a call to undeserved peace because none of us deserve that peace. And yet the angels or the shepherds, they received it. And we can receive it too. So how do we do that? How do we receive peace? (laughs) <laughs> this undeserved peace of God. I think the key is in looking at the response of the shepherds. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up the account here and read how the shepherds respond to this song. Verse 15, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen, heard and seen as it had been told them. Really neat, isn't that? And there's really, there's really two things here. I'm going to keep this really simple. Two things that I have to do if I want to receive this undeserved peace of God. Two things that I have to do. Number one, I have to make a personal choice. I have to make a personal choice. Think about it. The angels had to do that, didn't they? Or the shepherds, I'm sorry, the angels didn't. The shepherds did. They had to make a personal choice. And they really had three possible choices they could have made. Number one, they could have just kind of ignored what the angels did. Now, granted, that would have been pretty hard. I don't know if an angel came to me. I'd be pretty pretty hard to just ignore it. But they could have done that. They could have just said, hey, look, man, we probably had some bad Mexican food tonight, and we're probably just seeing things out there. This probably didn't really happen. And they could have just ignored it. The second thing they could have done is they could have believed. They said, yeah, isn't this cool? An angel came to us. And then just gone back to tending their shepherds and not done anything about it. Or the third thing, which is what they did, they said, hey, look, this angel came. We need to respond to this in some way. So what do they do? They go find the baby Jesus. And as I said earlier, I don't think that was an easy thing for them to do. Could you imagine going through the whole town of Bethlehem looking for one baby that was wrapped in some cloths and lying in a manger? But their lives were so transformed by that that encounter that they had with God and with God's angels that they went and they made a choice to do something about it. And because of that, their lives were changed forever. And we have basically those same three choices when it comes right down to it. 
We can just ignore the good news of Christmas, right? We can ignore it. And the world's full of people that do that. Some of them even put up Christmas decorations and sing Christmas carols and buy gifts and do all the other things. But, but frankly, when it comes right down to it, this whole idea that, that the way God's going to save the world is by sending a little baby into a manger and that that baby's going to grow up and die on a cross, they're like, that doesn't make any sense to me. And they just ignore it and they go on with their lives like, like nothing ever happened. There's a second choice. They can choose to believe it but not really do anything about it. And the world is filled with those kind of people too. Some of them put up nativity scenes in their homes, and they might even read the Christmas story in the Bible. They might even come to a Christmas Eve service. But when it comes right down to it, their lives have not changed one bit. They've never put their faith in Jesus Christ to the extent that it makes a difference in the way that they live their lives on a daily basis. And then the third choice, and the one I pray that all of us have made is that we can, we can commit our lives to Jesus Christ. We can act on what we know. We can put our faith in Jesus and in Jesus Christ alone, and out of gratitude for what He has done for us, our lives change, and we become more and more and more like Jesus, and we serve other people in His name, and we love other people. But we have to make a personal choice. Each one of us have to make that choice. No one else can make that choice for you. The second thing we see here is that once we made that choice, we have to pass on that gift to other people. I love what the shepherds do here. They go and they see the baby Jesus, but they don't just go back to their fields and go back to what they were doing. What do they do? They go out and they tell other people about what they've seen. And guess what? They didn't have a seminary degree. They didn't even have the New Testament Scriptures. Heck, they didn't even have a copy of the Old Testament Scriptures. Nobody had trained them to do that. They just did it out of the overflow of the joy that was in their heart over what they'd experienced. And frankly, if we've, if we've made a decision to enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ by putting our faith in Him, That should be the natural thing that we do. Out of joy over what Jesus Christ has done for us, our hearts ought to so overflow with joy that we go out and tell other people about Jesus. We don't need training. We don't need a seminary degree. Now, is it good to have some Bible verses to share? Absolutely. But here's the thing. If if genuinely down in your heart, that's not something that you just want to do, desire to do naturally, then then I don't want to get you to doubt your salvation, but, but maybe you need to re- really reconsider whether you, def- whether you really made a commitment to Jesus. Because if you do that and He changes your life, that's going to be just the natural overflow of your heart. So we've seen this morning that the angel's song, it's this, this call to undeserved peace. Now my prayer for you is that, that you've already received this undeserved peace, that you've made a personal decision for Jesus Christ, that you've put your faith in Him, made Him your Savior and your Lord. And if you've done that, then this song ought to be a great call for you just to give thanks to God and say, God, thank you so much for what you've done in my life. If you haven't done that, then I want to urge you to do that today. And we're here to help you to understand that decision, help you to make that decision help you to enter into a a personal relationship with Jesus. In just a few minutes, I'll share with you how we can help you do that if that's something you'd like to do. But if you've done that, then the second thing is that, that you naturally ought to go and share that faith that you have with other people. You know, in a sense, I was thinking about this as I, as I kind of wrapped up the message that what we're called to do is actually pretty similar to what the angels are called to do. They're called to do it in a different way than we are, but what are we called to do? We're called to magnify God, right? We're called to be messengers of God, and we're called to minister to people. So over these next two weeks, between now and Christmas, I want to challenge you to think about those things. How can I magnify God? How can I be a messenger of God? How can I minister to people? Now, we obviously live in a world that's not real full of God's glory right now, right? 
We don't see a lot of evidence of people taking advantage of God's grace in this world. And sometimes that's frustrating. I'll admit it. And sometimes we get to feel like, well, there's not much that we can do, either as an individual or as a church. But here's what we can do. We can make a difference in the lives of the people that God is bringing into our lives, the people that that cross paths with us. And we, we can just do that one life at a time. One life at a time, we can help them to make that personal choice. And we can help them to pass it on. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this song. I pray for the encouragement that it is for us to just share the things of Jesus with others, to have this joy that comes from knowing how much you love us, that you want us to have this peace, peace with you and peace with others, Father. Thank you that Christmas makes that possible. Father, help us to share it with others so that they might experience that same joy. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, we do want to connect with you. If, there's, if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you want to know more about that, we'd love to talk to you about it. You can, you can scan that QR code with your phone if you still have it out. It'll bring up an online connection card. You can fill that out. There's some, there's some uh, tan cards in the seats in front of you. You can fill that out. If you're online, you, could, you can talk with Lauren or with Ryan, and they'd be happy to, to set up a time to talk to you more about that. We'd love to do whatever we can to help you to make sure that you know Jesus this Christmas. A few announcements of some things coming up. The first one, we have a, a women's Christmas lunch that's coming up on December the 21st. If you'd like to be part of that, if you want more information, you can see Deborah or Cindy. They can give you some more information on that. Great opportunity for you ladies to join together and have a great time of fellowship. Starting on January 1st, if you've been giving online, we're going to have a new giving platform. Faith Life is pretty much shutting down a lot of the things that we've been using over the last several years. So there will be a new uh, platform as of January 1st. We're using a company called Subsplash. You can continue to give online um, using Faith Life through December the 31st of this year. But on January 1st, that'll be shut down. If we can help you in any way, get connected on the new platform. I know some of you have set up some recurring gifts We'll be happy to help you to make sure you get those transformed over because they won't carry through uh, to the new one. So, so just let us know if we can help you. You're continue to give in person as well or mail a check or all the other ways. But if you've been giving online, there's going to be a few changes. Um, I've been sending out some emails. Hopefully you're getting those and getting the information. But if we can help you, let us know. Finally, we, we have a Christmas Eve service coming up. Hard to believe two weeks from today, right? And uh, we'll be meeting here at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve. Well, actually, two weeks from yesterday. Uh, Christmas Eve, we'll be meeting at 4 o'clock here at church. It's going to be a fun time for us as a family to just celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus. So we invite you to come, bring a guest. We will not be having services here at church on December the 25th. If for some reason you can't make it, on Christmas Eve we'll be playing a recording of the uh, Christmas Eve service at 9.30 on Christmas Day online on our live uh, streaming, so you can go ahead and uh, join us that way. As we continue to worship, we're reminded that giving is a big part of 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 how we worship. And um, just a moment, we're going to watch a short video, and and we're going to sing a song, actually, that's about giving back to God. And, And really, the video and the song, they come from the the story of the Magi, and as most of us know, the Magi weren't there right at Christmas. They probably showed up a couple of years later, but they worshiped Jesus, and they brought him gifts, and that's what we can do as we, as we worship through our gifts as well, and I think you all know the, the various ways that you can give now, so we encourage you to do that. So go ahead and uh, watch the video, then we're going to sing a few songs to end our time together this morning.
go ahead and stand with us as we sing.
We thank you so much for this time of worshiping you in song. Lord, we thank you that these songs just remind us of your son's birth. And Lord, as we go through this week, just help us to focus on what Christ did for us, how he is the greatest gift that could ever be given to us, Lord. Just help us to focus our minds on your truth. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. 